And afterwards, I have to share a story about the best bird that I've seen in 2021, hands down. Everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today I thought it'd be a great day to go after common red poles. It's been a really good year for red poles, but I've struck out quite a few times because finding them is really easy this year. They're pretty much everywhere. You can hear them fly over all the time, but getting them in a good position for photography has been a bit challenging. But here we have a feeder set up and they've been coming through in large numbers. Yesterday I saw around 100. So I'll show you my setup, what I decided to go with, and I thought I'd try a few different things today. The first is, right now we have some clouds, so it'd be some nice overcast light, but later on these clouds should move out and we'll get some really harsh light. So I thought it'd be fun to compare the, the two lighting situations, see if we can get anything actually usable in the harsh light. And if we can't, eh, whatever, it was a good experiment. And another thing that I have set up is I'm gonna set up a wide angle lens because uh, I just got a new remote so I can trigger everything wirelessly. And I'll start setting up now and show you what we're working with and what my plans are. And afterwards, I have to share a story about the best bird that I've seen in 2021, hands down. I had no idea that this bird would be in that area. It's just dumb luck, but like wow what it like uh, it's a lifer for me so i'll share that story a bit after i'm still kind of speechless didn't sleep last night too excited but anyways i'll start setting up and we'll get to it stay tuned all right so this is what we're working with here we have a feeder set up here and although red poles will go to the feeders they definitely prefer to go on the ground so i've seen them just fall on the ground even the empty husks of the sunflower seeds they're still picking them up and looking if there's anything inside so since they prefer to feed on the ground i have this set up here which is the uh, tamron 17 to 28 on my a7 III and this is the remote i'm using i forgot the exact model name might be in the back here rmt p1bt um, honestly a little bit overkill for what it is in terms of price but it has all the features I needed. Uh, on the side, you can lock the buttons, which is also a nice feature if you have it in your pocket, but you have the shutter button here, AF on button. So when you're using autofocus, you can actually autofocus wirelessly, which is great. And then C1 button, which for me, I have it set to switch between manual focus and autofocus. And then on the side here, you have movie and still. This is the big one that I wanted. And then here you have zoom and focus. For the lenses that I have, zoom is pretty much just that digital zoom that you get in the cameras, which I probably won't use too much. If I have this set up, it means that I have it set up in a good enough spot that I won't really need to be zooming in. And then the focus is controlled with these plus and minus when you're in manual focus. So you can change the focus plane, which is great. So what I did here was I set up the lens pretty close to these two holes that I made in the ground and I just filled them with sunflower seeds. So whenever the birds come down and they go for these sunflower seeds, all I have to do is hit the shutter button and it's going to start firing some shots. So I have everything kind of like pre-focused. You probably can't see the screen too well, but I'll throw up what it looks like ahead of time with no birds. And then what I did yesterday was I set up this chair over here just so that the birds are kind of used to having an object in that area. And I just have a little foam pad set up and I'll be pretty much smack dab on the ground trying to get birds at eye level with a telephoto lens. I'm using the 200 to 600. So that's my plan for now. I'll get set up and hopefully they can come in. I really, really want to get some wide angle shots of them. I think that, oh, chickadee. I don't have anything. Oh, he's gone. Uh, I don't have anything for him. Sorry. Oh, maybe he'll go right in front. You might go right for those seats on the ground, actually. Nope. No, never mind. Went right to the feeder. Uh, so I'll get set up now. Wish me luck. Stay tuned.
wondering why I'm not using a blind, it's because of this. Red poles are really comfortable as long as you're not moving too much. I'll show you right now. They're pretty much all right in front of me. I have my remote. Hopefully one of them walks up to the wide angle lens. I figure if one of them finds seeds there, the other ones are probably gonna join it. So maybe I'll be able to get two or three red poles in the same photo, but we'll see. All right, so a little change of plans. This is where I originally had it set up and it seemed like they weren't really going to it because I don't know if I had the hole big enough. Maybe they just didn't know there were seeds there, but also it's a little bit too much in the open. So I feel like they were a little reluctant to go there. Whereas right here, they keep landing in this tree. So I figured if I made a bigger hole and put more sunflower seeds, I could probably get them to see them from up top on the branch over here and then fly right down. So we'll try that now. I might change the setup a couple times. I also have to come here to turn on silent shooting mode because I didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal, but the shutter on the a7 III is a little bit loud. So I find they were aware of it when I pressed it a few times just to test it. So I just decided to turn it on so the birds have really no idea when I'm taking a photo and hopefully that increases my chance at success. Well, I had to cave in. I went and get my blind and set it up. I haven't had a red pole in over three hours. They were with me, they were fine. None of them went in front of the wide angle lens, but then they just took off and now I guess they're feeding somewhere else. Chickadees are still coming every so often, but just at the feeder. And then there's cardinals, juncos, and blue jays that were showing up, but they were kind of reluctant to land around here and I'm pretty sure it's just because I was out there. So I'm just trying to get anything in front of that wide angle lens. I just want to see if this is actually going to work, what it's going to look like. And I just want to start doing this more and more so I can tweak it. So then by spring and summertime, I'll have a good technique and kind of know what to do when I find a good subject out in the field. So I'm practicing with that now and I need subjects to go in front of that lens. So I put this up as a last ditch effort. I turned the height around. So I'm using the entrance as a viewing window. This just gives me a better vantage point for birds that are higher up in the trees. And if they're planning to come down to the feeder, to the seeds, I can see them quicker and then get my shutter ready on my remote and hopefully trigger the camera at the right time. All right, well, about an hour ago, I went and switched one of the batteries and I moved the camera another time. And finally, chickadees started coming to it. I think I got a few photos and definitely one video. I just don't know if the angle's right. Where I'm sitting right now, the camera kind of blocks the angle of where the birds are landing. So I don't know with 100% certainty if I have them facing the camera, if I have their back. Well, I think one of those actually turned out pretty good. I think the video might be okay too, but I'll have to see on the computer. But now that I'm done with that, I can share with you the most incredible encounter that I've had so far in 2021, hands down. Like, I don't know if I'll even be able to beat this the rest of the year, but yesterday I decided to go out with my girlfriend's dad and we we're going and look for snow buntings and horn larks. And for those of you that have those species in your area, you know, Later on in the season, as more and more snow starts to melt, there's more exposed areas where the birds can go and feed. So around this time, there's a decent amount of patches that are open. So the birds are extremely skittish. So we went out, we found a few little flocks feeding, but we couldn't get within 50 meters of them without them flushing and taking off. So afterwards, I was just like, you know what, forget this. Like we're not gonna get anything. There's just way too much exposed area for them to be feeding. So we decided to drop that idea and head towards the forest to try to find something else. And on the drive there, we stopped at a spot where we usually look for eagles and ducks. And when we got out of the car, right on the top of the tree, it was such a distinct shape. There was a northern hawk owl. 
I've never seen one before. He's never seen one before. It was a lifer for both of us. Like, it's just one of those birds that, like, I didn't even think that there would be one around or that I would even see one. I always thought that I would have to go do a specific trip to go find them. And then right in the top of this tree, probably one moving to go up north, was just sitting there overlooking a field. We were both just speechless, staring at this beautiful owl, yellow eyes, the stripes that they have, the spots that they have on the back, the spots on the head, like just an epic owl. And I would have loved to stay there, you know, for an hour or two, but I know they are a sensitive species. So I didn't want to disturb it or alter its natural behavior. So we just got a few shots, enjoyed the moment, and then we left. And that's so far been the best sighting of 2021 for me. I wish I could say that it was due to like a lot of hard work and I, you know, went into the field for hours and hours trying to find it. But honestly, it was just me failing on snow buntings and horn larks that led me to that bird by complete chance. So that's the great thing about wildlife photography is no matter how prepared you are, you never really know what's going to happen. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like the photos and my wide angle lens experimentation. I'll see you in the next one.